Welcome back, Ravens Flock. Thank you for joining me once again for another edition of Ravens Online on Gatekeeper, giving you your Baltimore Ravens news, updates, and whatever else is going on with this team. We are now entering week 13. The Baltimore Ravens are 7-4 and four with this last loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. As you can see in the background, I put this up for a reason. Everybody wants to comment on how Lamar Jackson should have done this, how Lamar Jackson should have done that. But the offense, in all their deficiencies, scored 27 points. Now, with all the money that we've invested in defense, we should have easily shut down Jacksonville, who were missing Travis Etienne, who went down with an injury early in the first quarter. Now, theoretically, Jacksonville only had Zay Jones in this game. So you would have thought with this old-world $43 million secondary, we could have shut him down, but he had a career game against us. 11 catches, 145 yards, but 24-hour rule, that game is over. We now face the 3-8 and eight division bottom tier Denver Broncos. Broncos country, let's slide because they darn sure aren't riding anywhere but to the top 10 of the NFL draft. Once again, we ended the game going up against an opponent that is not of the standards that we would call a good team. So we thought that this half of the schedule was going to be the cupcake portion, and we were going to reel off wins and take control of this division. Now, with the loss Sunday and the advent of Cincinnati winning their game, we are technically tied for first place with us holding the tiebreaker, but we do play Cincinnati in the last game of the season. Now, the Denver Broncos, they are struggling mightily. You know, everybody thought once they acquired Russell Wilson, that was the piece that they were missing because the defense has been strong throughout the years. They just had lackluster quarterback play. Now, you would think bringing in a $250 million quarterback with Denver already having Cortland Sutton, Jared Judy, uh, KJ Hamley even, that they would kind of be a little bit better on offense. They're averaging about 230 yards passing per game, which – is kind of a misleading stat because there have been games where Russell has been downright putrid. Now, I know Denver thought that they were going to lean on the running game. In the beginning of the season, they had Melvin Gordon. They had Javante Williams. But Javante Williams, he got hurt, and Melvin Gordon couldn't stop fumbling, so they released him two weeks ago. Now he was picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs. Strong gets stronger. And after that, I believe that Denver kind of went into rebuild mode, trading away Bradley Chubb, their best pass rusher. Now, since that trade, Denver's defense hasn't been as stout as it normally has been, but they're going against the Ravens and this offense, so we honestly don't know what to expect. We thought that with Lamar Jackson, we were going to be a little bit better offensively than we have been. Now, this past game, Lamar passed for over 200 yards, which is really not a given, being that we lost Rashad Bateman, We've had some injuries. We didn't sign anybody of note during the offseason. Now, Deshaun Jackson, he has played well in spurts, but offensively, we can only get him in the game for about 10, 15 snaps a game. He is 35 years old, so we can't count on him to be that prolific go-to number one. Even with Denver having a statistically down year, they do have Patrick Satan the second. Now, he's been struggling the past few weeks, but I think this may be his get-right game versus us. We are not doing anything offensively that kind of scares teams in the least bit. Um, Lamar's been off track a little bit. These wide receivers are not running good routes. They're dropping the ball each and every single week. Now, for those of you that cried, hey, we're not going to miss Hollywood. We downright do. Like, other than Mark Andrews, who does Lamar really have to go to? You can say Demarcus Robinson, but he was number four on the Chiefs for a reason, and they cut him. The Las Vegas Raiders cut him for a reason without having a receiver outside of Devontae Adams. Now, I don't know what that says, but you make your own assumptions. So to me, this game is going to come down to, are we going to be able to run the ball effectively? Are we going to be able to line up play smash mouth football and run the ball down their throats. Now, can Denver stop us running? Who knows? Because we offensively don't know which Baltimore Ravens team is going to show up week in and week out. Now, defensively for us, we're supposed to have a team that can shut down the pass. We were supposed to have one of the better defensive backfields 
in the NFL, but it has not come to fruition so far this season. We've been up at least two scores in every game that we played this season. Now, you can't put that on the offense because they're doing their job. Going up two scores is a big deal, especially when you have a defense when all of your assets and all of your money are placed on that side of the ball. Will they be able to stop this passing game, or are we going to allow another quarterback to come in here and have a career day versus our defense? We shall see. For me, I think that this game boils down to coaching. Are we going to be able to make in-game adjustments because we got out coached last week? They saw something that wasn't working. They changed it, and then they were able to score 18 points given up in the fourth quarter because the adjustments made now our defensive coordinator he is a rookie he has not had the experience of going up against offensive minded coaches like this back at michigan now they had some good teams that they played but they do play cupcake schedules as well so will we be able to make these adjustments that is a big key time management which has been a problem since john harbaugh's gotten here we seem to always line up late, get the plays in late, have no time to survey the defense, make audibles or do anything. And these delay of game penalties are killing us. So Jonathan Harbaugh, I put this on you. Ravens flock, let's fly. Now, if you don't know, I said it first. I know Justin Tucker watches the channel. He checks it out from time to time. And that's where he got the moniker from. You know, he doesn't have to give me credit, but we all know what happened. So Let's just jump into the rest of this NFL action and see what we got going on for week 13. So to kick off this week 13 action, we start with the Thursday night game, which actually is a decent game for once. We have the Buffalo Bills traveling up to Foxborough to take on the New England Patriots. Now, both teams both played Thursday on Thanksgiving in their prospective matchups. Now, Josh Allen, I don't know what's going on with him. He's been struggling a bit. He hasn't played up to the MVP caliber that he normally does, but... New England, surprisingly, is struggling defensively. Um, Mac Jones had a decent game. They should have won, but they just couldn't stop Minnesota. They let Kirk Cousins kind of break his primetime streak of just losing games and looking awful. So with that being said, I'm going to have to pick Buffalo for the win. Now, to start the Sunday action at 1 o'clock, the first game is the Cleveland Browns traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. Now, this should be the first game that Deshaun Watson plays after serving his 11-game suspension, and this may make Cleveland a totally different team. Uh, I don't know if he's going to knock the rust off, how he's going to look, but just him being there should be a boost because he is 10 times better than Jacoby Brissett. Now, Houston, they made the switch from Davis Mills to the boy Allen, which any way that you slice it just isn't matching up to NFL standards. Now they do have Damian Pierce at running back. They have Brandon Cooks at wide receiver, but that's all that they pretty much have on this team. So I think that Deshaun Watson is going to have a successful debut and Cleveland is going to win this game. Next on the docket, we have the Denver Broncos with Russell Wilson traveling to M&T Bank Stadium to take on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this should be a defensive struggle because both offenses aren't what we thought they would be coming into the season. The one bonus that the Baltimore Ravens have is we can run the ball. We can line up against any team, and if we play like we're capable of playing, we can run for 200 yards, and that should be the difference in this game. Now, is Lamar Jackson and his receivers going to get back into sync and start making the plays that they were making earlier in the season? I know we do not have Rashad Bateman playing, but there should be not this steep of a decline in the passing game missing one person. Even with all this being said, I think that defensively, we should be strong enough to shut Denver down but you never know with this team from week to week what's going to happen. But I'm still going to roll with Baltimore to win this game and go to 8-4. and four. Next up is the Green Bay Packers traveling to Chicago to take on the Bears. Now, this is going to maybe a matchup of backup quarterbacks. We don't know. Aaron Rodgers left the game late with a rib injury and did not return. Jordan Love had to come in to finish the game. He looked pretty decent. Now, in Chicago, is Justin Fields going to play? He's been getting banged up. He's rushed for a lot of yards, and it's taking a toll on his body. Will he start? That may or may not determine the outcome of this game in the battle of the backups. Um, I just think that both teams have strong running games. They have decent defenses, but I just think that turnovers may play a vital role in this game. 
So I'm going to roll with the home team in the upset and have Chicago take this win. In our next matchup, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to Detroit to take on the Detroit Lions. Now, the Detroit Lions are a scrappy team, and they have been eking out some wins, but I just don't think they have the consistency to keep up with Jacksonville and their ninth-rated offense. Now, Trevor Lawrence may have turned a corner in his game. We don't know. Could it be that the Baltimore Ravens defense is just the cure that ails all? We don't know. Will Travis Etienne play? Will Zay Jones continue his ascension into being a better receiver in this league? This is going to be a tough game to call, so I'm thinking that this one is going to rely on coaching. And I just think that Doug Peterson is taking Jacksonville to new heights. He's he's coaching up this offense, and he has that experience. He is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So with that being said, I'm going to take Jacksonville to continue their win streak and beat the Detroit Lions. We now have the... New York Jets traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Now, as I said before, Kirk Cousins, he's normally a loser in primetime matchups, but he looked pretty good against New England on Thanksgiving. Now, the Jets, they have benched Zach Wilson and brought back Mike White to start the game. They looked a lot better. They have Gert Wilson, who is a complete monster. That kid looks unstoppable. And the New York Jets as a team, like I said before, in the beginning of the season, they were going to be a surprise team and they may make the playoffs. They could have beaten the Ravens had it been for better coaching. But this team is just making all of the right moves and setting themselves up for the future to be one of the dominant teams in the NFL. Now, I'm going to go with the New York Jets to continue their surprise season and get this win over the Minnesota Vikings. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Baby Hands versus the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Pittsburgh just won their Monday night matchup versus the Indianapolis Colts, and the Falcons are just stuck being the Falcons. I can't say it enough. Marcus Mariota just isn't that dude. He's a serviceable stopgap quarterback, but for a season, I just don't think he can get it done. Cordell Patterson is Mr. Everything for them. Kyle Pitts has been injured, so that's taken away one of their offensive weapons. I just think that with T.J. Watt coming back, he's galvanized his team. Mike Tomlin is getting this team to hit their stride in, in the right portion of the season, and he's fighting hard not to have his first losing season. So I think that Pittsburgh is going to go on a little win streak here. They're going to take this game and continue to try to get to 500. Next up is the Tennessee Titans traveling to the city of brotherly love to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, the league leading Philadelphia Eagles. Now they've looked a little sketchy for a couple of weeks there and people started to doubt them, but I've said this before, they have the most complete team in the NFL and also being that they got Jalen hurts, a bunch of weapons. He's looked like a top tier MVP type quarterback in this league. I just think Tennessee just, doesn't have the weapons they need. They're missing A.J. Brown. Uh, Traylon Burks isn't the receiver that they thought he was going to be when they drafted him. And Mike Vrabel is getting the most out of his team. They still have Derrick Henry, and they have a pretty good defense. But Philadelphia is just going to be too much for them to overcome. So Philadelphia, I think, is going to blow Tennessee out the water. In our last 1 o'clock matchup, we have the Washington Commanders traveling to New York New Jersey to take on the Giants. Now the Giants have gone on a little skid. I think that their luck has run out, but Brian Dayball has gotten everything out of this team and more than you could have expect at the beginning of the season. Um, teams are keying in on Saquon Barkley. They know that Daniel Jones is not one of the elite passers in the league, but he's doing a lot better than I thought he would. He's trying to keep them in games, but their offensive line is a mess being that they have some former Ravens on there that couldn't hack it here. So, you know, if they couldn't play here, why would you think that they could play in New York? Taylor Heineke has re-energized the Washington team. And I just think defensively, they will have a little bit too much for the Giants to overcome. Offensively, they have my man, Scary Terry. They have Brian Robinson running the ball. And I just think that they're going to score too many points because the New York Giants really can't score. They play decent defense, but scoring is not one of their fortes. I know that they beat us, but this team has come back to life. So I'm picking Washington for the win. Ugh. Now, aside from the Ravens game, one of the games that I would like to see, 
and that's going to start our four o'clock matchup. Hopefully it's on TV because the commanders are playing at one o'clock. So we don't have to see them play. It's going to be the Miami Dolphins traveling to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. This is going to be a game where it's actually going to be offense versus defense. You have Tua, Waddle, and Tyreek Hill going up against that stout San Francisco defense. Now, who's going to prevail? I don't know. I just don't think that Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers offense has that much going on. Debo Samuels is a little nicked up, but they do have Christian McCaffrey to kind of take his place as Mr. Do Everything. But can Jimmy lead this team in a playoff-type game? I don't know. What I do know is Tua can throw that ball, or he can at least get it in the vicinity of his wide receivers to catch it and make plays. And with the advent of them adding Jeff Wilson, the run game has gotten going. They traded for Bradley Chubb, so the defense is playing a little bit better. So I just think that in this matchup, that could be a Super Bowl preview. It's not out the realm of possibility. I think that Miami is actually going to take the win in this game. Next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks traveling to L.A. in SoFi Stadium to take on the Los Angeles defending champion Rams. Now, Geno Smith. He has kind of come back to earth. He's not playing as well as he has been, but he's still playing better than expectations. The biggest question for me is what happened to DK Metcalf? He seems to have disappeared these past few games. Now the Rams, their whole team is missing. Aaron Donald is injured. Even with him at full strength, this defense has not been playing up to par. Matthew Stafford's been hurt. He hasn't been playing well all season. Are they having a Super Bowl hangover? Who's to say? I just believe that with Seattle and his run game, with Kenneth Walker taking the lead now, they are going to be too much for the Rams to handle. And missing Cooper Cup is a big loss. So Seattle for the win. Now for the next 4 o'clock matchup. If this is one, if I can't see San Francisco and Miami, I want to see this matchup. We have the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Now, the Bengals and the Ravens are tied right now for the division lead. They still have to play Buffalo. They have this game against Kansas City. Now, all world, Mr. Everything Patrick Mahomes, I think he is going to be a little bit too strong for this Cincinnati defense. Who's going to stop Travis Kelsey? I don't know. Can Joe Burrow keep the pace with this Kansas City offense? Now, Jamal Chase is slated to come back. It has not been written in stone, but he is a big boost to that team. Now, T. Higgins has taken over that number one lead, and he is that dude. Don't forget, we could have had him instead of Patrick Queen, but I digress. Now, for me, this is a tough game to call because the last two matchups last season with Kansas City and Cincinnati, Kansas City took big leads. Cincinnati came back and actually won the game. They even won the game in the playoffs where Kansas City had everything going for them until that ill-fated play at the end of the first half, which took points off the board, which they could have used to win the game because they only scored three points in the second half. Does Cincinnati have Kansas City's number? I don't know, but I'm still going to go with Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes for the win. Now, in an AFC West matchup, We have the Los Angeles Chargers traveling to the desert to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. They played a heck of a game last week with Josh Jacobs accounting for over 300 yards of total offense. Now, they didn't sign him to his fifth-year option. He's playing for a contract for some team next year, and he showed, listen, I know you thought that my, my decline was coming. It ain't here yet. I'm still going. The Los Angeles Chargers, they're starting to get a little bit healthier. They're getting some of their wide receivers back, and they have Justin Herbert. Now, I know a lot of people aren't high on Justin Herbert. He has the intangibles. He looks the part, but he just can't seem to get the wins. But last week, he came up with a win late in the game and a two-point conversion. So I just don't think that Josh McDaniels can keep this team on the winning track. So I'm going to have to go with the Los Angeles Chargers for the win. Now, for the Sunday night game, we have the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. I don't know why Indianapolis seems to be getting all of these primetime games. They were just on Monday Night Football, even coming into the season with the acquisition of Matt Ryan as quarterback. Nobody thought that this team was going to be any good. So why are they on primetime so much? It's hard to say. The Dallas Cowboys are starting to hit their groove. They're starting to win. Dak Prescott is looking better and better each week. I think this team is a serious contender for the NFC title. I mean, they may 
or may not be on par with the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll find out in their second matchup. I just think that Indianapolis, their franchise, they're just going downhill. And the hiring of Jeff Saturday did nothing for this team. No one thought he should have been hired. I definitely think that they shouldn't have hired him. But, hey, that's what happens when you're best friends with an owner. I just think that Dallas has too much talent in all world. Micah Parsons is going to lead this team to victory over the struggling, sad, sorry, Indianapolis. We left Baltimore Colts. Now, for the last game of the Week 13 schedule on Monday Night Football, we have the New Orleans Saints traveling down to Florida to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, everyone thought, was turning the corner, kind of getting things right to make that push to go into the playoffs. But I still think that their lack of running game is going to be the downfall of this team. Now, this once strong defense has struggled throughout the season to keep opponents out the end zone. They struggled to hold late leads. They just aren't the team that they used to be. Devin White, uh, I don't know what's going on with him. But as always, you can never count out Tom Brady. Now, for New Orleans... They are missing Michael Thomas, which hurts, but they have Andy Dalton, a quarterback. I still don't understand why he is their starting quarterback. People say he's playing decent. I don't see it that way. I see him playing like Andy Dalton. He still has Alvin Kamara. He has the rookie Chris Olave, who may be the best rookie wide receiver in the league. He and Garrett Wilson are running neck and neck for me for offensive rookies of the year. It's just that the quarterback play for this team just isn't getting it done. Dennis Allen, once again, he is not a good coach. He does not know what to do with this team. I do not know why once Jameis Winston got healthy, he has not come back in and start for this team. It can't get any worse than what has happened before. Now, once again, you can never count out Tom Brady. So I'm going to pick Tampa Bay to win this matchup in the last game of the week. Once again, i like to thank everybody for stopping by checking out the channel please like subscribe if you have not comment share this let everybody know what's going on it is truly appreciated and until next time